give you my heart. I give you my soul. Have your way in me. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everybody. We are here one more time to look into God's Word and leave and be prepared to be transformed. Let us pray together. Loving Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We ask in a special way that you would bless us today on your holy Sabbath day. In Jesus' name. Paul in the book of Ephesians outlined several different spiritual gifts that are given to different individuals. Go with me in your Bible as, as we explore this short passage of Scripture, as, as Paul outlines several spiritual gifts. The Bible says that he himself, that is Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, for equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. till we all come to unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to be a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Here is Paul outlining all of these different spiritual gifts, and right up there is the gift of pastoring. Today, pastors are seen as small CEOs, they're right up there with CEOs of a small business. They're there managing and supporting different aspects of the organization. Most of all, they are there to help build people. Pastors are there to invest in human beings. Paul outlines this because he sees the importance of pastoring. Understand, as we look at the text, that you could see in the Bible that there are three key areas that Paul talks about the role of the past in terms of supporting the church, equipping, edifying, educating. Paul understands the importance of pastoring. After all, he himself pastored different churches. But we live in a postmodern time where pastoring has taken on a different shape. And then it is compounded on the impact of COVID. In some ways, pastors have become super pastors. They are expected and sometimes they are seen running back and forth doing a host of things as they are trying to seek and trying to support the needs of the church members and the community. Pastors are seen doing different things. Pastors have been seen uh, baptizing individuals. They, they, they lead baby dedication. They, they work collaboratively with the board and with the board of elders. Pastors are seen running back and forth. They are seen sometimes as superhuman beings. Oftentimes they are seen organizing uh, the ordination services. They, they help manage church finance. They help manage the building. And for after so many years, many of us, we have been here, and, and we have been longing for such a long time to, to see this building be renewed. We are now living in that experience. I'm going to tell you, this new building now comes and requires more management. What it was and required many years ago in terms of maintenance, the maintenance now is even higher. And our pastors have to be able to support that work. Pastors spend a lot of time in marital counseling. And as we partner, and as they partner with different organizations in the community, oftentimes 
they are seen managing those different partnerships. Pastors are constantly leading. They're constantly leading by example. They're preparing sermons. They, they're preparing different messages because oftentimes they are tapped by the community to do different things. They're leading board meetings. They're visiting church members. They're supporting and leading different ministries. They're, they're planning and constantly coordinating. All of these different activities come with different challenges as, as pastors today are being asked to operate in a different paradigm. In a survey of pastors, it was, it was revealed that 90% of pastors report working 50 to 75 hours a week. Pastor just said, that's a short week. And this was pre-COVID, by the way. 84% of pastors feel that they are on call 24-7. And this is compounded with the introduction of the technological age where pastors have cell phones and the expectation is, is that whenever a text or a phone call comes, they must be there ready and prepared to respond. See, many years ago, it was expected that, that if you called the home of the pastor and he wasn't there, eventually he would return the call. But with the introduction of cell phones and social media, it is expected that once the texts go through, a response will be coming right away. Pastors are constantly juggling their, on their fingers, getting ready to respond to different calls. 80% of pastors believe that ministry have negatively affected their families. And many pastors' children don't attend church because of what the church has done to their parents. 24% of families resent the church and its effect on the family. These are some of the challenges that pastors are faced today. And it gets, and it goes even further, that 65% of pastors feel that their lives are like living in a fishbowl. And sometimes they feel as though they are not good enough to meet the expectations. 65% of pastors feel that they, they are not taking enough vacation to spend time with their families over the last five years. So when you see the pastor leaves for vacation, understand that he's trying not to be part of this statistics. 53% of pastors are concerned about their future, finance, their future family financial security. Simply because the ministry does not pay high as compared to other secular jobs. 57% of pastors reported they are unable to pay their bills. And if you take a close examination, some of them are sometimes even working a second job. They're either counseling or teaching at the university to be able to supplement that pay. 52% of pastors feel overworked. And they feel as though they simply can't meet the unrealistic expectations of the church. These are some of the challenges that some of our pastors are facing today. And so 54% of them find the, 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 the role of a pastor to be very, very overwhelming. 26% of pastors report feeling fatigued. But yet we see them as superhumans, we see them as superhumans, and we also fail to remember that Jesus himself felt tired. Understand that when he was in that boat in the middle of a storm, he was tired. Understand that when he had to recline and to be able to draw strength from his father, he was tired. 
Understand that when he took time off and he went to the homes of Mary and Martha just to be able to find refreshment, he was tired. But yet we expect our pastors to always be energized. We expect them to be there for at our very call. And as a result of that, many of our pastors, they become workaholics. Many of our pastors are struggling with depression. Many of our pastors don't see themselves as being adequate. And many of them are deeply desiring the opportunity to connect with someone when they're going through a different conflict because they simply don't feel that they have someone they could get connected to and to be able to chat and confide in. This is 84% of pastors feel this way. And as a result, many pastors are leaving the ministry. This reality should be very clear for us here at Renew. Because it was very recent ago that we had our pastor that had to leave because of health reasons. For over 16 years, he toiled in this field. And had to leave because of health issues. And we are thankful to be able to have our pastors here with us today. Because there are many churches that simply don't have a pastor to lead them. Pastors today are leaving for different reasons. They're leaving because they're stressed and burnt out. Many are leaving because of poor health. Many are leaving because of resistance and rejection. Some for low income, and many are leaving because of the constant conflict that occur in churches. Mercy. But understand that, that God saw the benefit of blessing individuals with the gift of pastorship. God saw the benefit of, of blessing individuals with the gift of pastoring. And so the question is, if God blessed them and they're here, what are we doing to take care of them? What are we doing as a, as a church to make sure that we are we are there like Mary and Martha who, who was there and willing to open their home so, so that Jesus, when he stepped by, after healing the sick and, and raising the dead, had a place to recline. What are we doing and what should we be doing as we, as we look at how the work today has been redefined? We today are blessed because we know that there is still a God in heaven that if he could give the gift, he could supply the strength. If he could give the gift, he could supply the strength. And oftentimes, oftentimes, God may place before the pastor, watch this, monk, a, a, a challenging mountain before him. And oftentimes, sometimes their prayer is, Lord, could this mountain move? Lord, could this mountain be removed? Weren't you the one that said, if we have faith, that we could say to the mountain, be moved, and the mountain will be moved. And sometimes God allowed that mountain to stay right there. But two things he, he, he does as he allowed the mountain. He allowed the mountain to be rough, and he provides them the strength. Brother Taylor, what are you saying? Because you can't climb a smooth mountain. Am I making sense? You can't climb a smooth mountain. And so sometimes God gives them the strength to climb that mountain, to be able to overcome, because he knows from one step to the next, he would get stronger. From one step to the next, the pastor gets stronger. In fact, in fact, we just read in our scripture reading Isaiah's experience. The Bible says, the Bible says in Isaiah, then said I, woe is me, 
For I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. Understand that for most pastors, before they say yes, Lord, many of them question themselves. The Lord comes to them and say, I want you to become a pastor, and they're looking around. Who, me? Got to be somebody else. The Lord comes to Moses, and Moses starts identifying a list of excuses why he can't go back and free God's people. Oftentimes, God's Holy Spirit comes, and he looks at these individuals and say, you know, come, let's go, and, and let's together be able to equip educate and prepare our, prepare my people for work and service, and in most individuals who are called into ministry sometimes say no. They understand that they are just mere dust. They understand that they have issues. Sometimes they understand that they have their own inadequacies, their, their inherent issues. But I'm thankful because the text doesn't stop there. The Bible says in verse 6 that one of the seraphims, one of the seraphims flew by with a coal in his hand. One of the seraphim came and flew by with a coal in his hand from off the altar. He flew by with a coal in his hand off the altar and he touched his lips. And his iniquity was taken away. I often believe that if God calls you to ministry, if he calls you, he's going to prepare you. If he calls you, he's going to equip you. If he calls you, he's going to qualify you. God knows what he's doing. God understands that we are mere dust, but dust in the hands of the potter. When God molds that dust into something, he could use it for his glory. The Bible says, then, then Isaiah says, And lo, I heard a voice saying, Who shall I send? And who shall go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Today I'm thankful that many pastors are answering the call. Today I'm thankful that God is still equipping our pastors to do the work. Their job is not to do it alone, but their job is to help us together so that we could be able to all together be able to evangelize and advance the cause of Jesus. Today, I'm thankful that individuals are still responding to the call of God, that those who are in ministry are staying in ministry in spite of the challenges that are coming their way. The role of pastors is difficult, and many times, they do it with a smile on their face. Many individuals, as they pastor, they're smiling. Go ahead and smile, Pastor. Go ahead. Look at the screen. It's all right. They're faced with all these challenges, but they come here and they're smiling. It's because of God's presence in their lives. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, they would have left a long time ago. If it wasn't for Jesus, I'm telling you, the presence of God does something in your life. Some of us remember when the, the time in our lives before Jesus, when people step on your toes and you curse them out. When that time before Jesus came and many of us were pursuing our, our dreams that had nothing to do with God, but God came in the picture and refocused our lens, and our pastors today come with a smile on their face. So then how could we be able, in practical ways, to be able to take care of our pastor? One, let's pray for them and let's pray with them. This week, I was, it was unfortunate. I was in school, and uh, we had some conflict with some of our students. And in an effort to, to make sure that I keep them safe, students broke my glasses. 
So it's there in the house in four pieces. Those students had conflict. They knew who, for them, their apparent enemy was. But pastors have to face an enemy that is unseen. An enemy that the only way we could defeat the enemy is if we stay on our knees. And pastors draw strength when their members are praying for them and with them. Next, we could be able to be able to pray for our pastor's family. Pray for our families. Pray for our pastor's families. Because the pastor's families are oftentimes dealing with a lot of challenges that the general congregation may not see right away. They have to be able to deal with, with the seeing the pastor, their dad, in and out. The challenges that come with that. Another way in which we could be able to support our pastors, again, as I said, continue to pray for them, pray for their families, but also pray for their wives. Because oftentimes, the wives are behind the scene trying to hold things down. When they have little children, they are the ones helping the children to get their homework done. While they are out at the church leading board meetings and supporting different activities. It's important to be able to pray for our, the, the, the wives of our pastors. Look at Pastor William. He's looking at Sister Danny and he's saying, don't worry, when we go home, we'll study some Daniel and Revelation. <laughs> when we go home, we'll study some Daniel and Revelation. We put the kids to bed. I know where your mind is headed. It's important to support the pastor's wife. They're in the background holding things down because they know this together is a partnership. I said again, they know that together this is a partnership. And they, they want to be able to be there to support their spouse, to pray and, and take care. Let's take care of our, the, 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 our wives, the wives for our pastors. Other ways in which we could be able to take care of our pastor is to be able to express forms of appreciation. Recent research have indicated that for many years, there have been a significant impact in the lives of pastors because many of them did not feel appreciated. And since the introduction of pastor appreciation, a simply setting aside of a month, that act alone has significantly improved the quality of life for many pastors. So let them know that you care. Let them know that they've been, their work is not going unnoticed. Support their leadership. Oftentimes, uh, the work is, 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 is been placed on the pastor to lead, and because you may not see the vision immediately, sometimes we as church members are hesitant to follow, or we are hesitant to get involved. But oftentimes, as you could see in the Bible, oftentimes, over and over again, God shares the vision with the leader, and the leader then shares the vision with everybody else. And the best way to be able to take care of our pastors is to engage in ministry. The work wasn't meant for them alone. The work was meant for everyone to get involved. And the more individuals get involved in the process, is the longer our pastors could be able to stay with us. Simply because the wear and tear that was meant for 20 is 
we are not allowing it to be on a sheet. Whenever it is possible, share words of affirmation with our pastors. As an educator over the years, and I look out and I see some fellow educators in the congregation, every now and again, whether or not it's students or colleagues, they come up and they either write or send us as educators words of affirmation. Because the field of education looks different today. Educators are called to do a host of different things in, in addition to delivering lessons. And I can't imagine how it makes me feel when students and other staff members come up and they share words of affirmation, how that would, the impact that would have on a pastor. That they are fighting spiritual battles. They, they're on their knees and praying. They're oftentimes up and about doing a variety of different things. Simple words of affirmation could go a long way. So we as a church body have our part to play as we look at different ways as we could be able to help, support, and take care of our pastors. One of the things that I am extremely excited about is that Jesus, Jesus understands this role really, really well. John in the book of Revelation, Revelation 7 verse 9 says, he says, I, he, he looked, and there before him, he, he saw a great multitude. As I close, he said, I saw a great multitude. One that no one could number, and one that no one could count. He said, I saw a great multitude of different nations, tribe, people, and language. We as a people should be excited because we made it. We as a people should be excited because we made it. Because what John said, he didn't saw one in the video, he saw a kaleidoscope of people. Standing before the throne, standing before the Lamb, and they were wearing white robes, and they were holding palms in their, in their hands. In their, in their hands. John said, I saw all of these people, and they were crying out, saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb that exists. I'm saying today, this group that you are seeing, that we are reading about in our Bibles, many of them owe it to pastors being able to meet with them and to be able to share the good word with them. These individuals are there because of the work of our pastors. Pastors around the world that have given up their lives and given up everything. To be, able to, to be able to see individuals come to the foot of the cross. Today, as, as, we, as we think and reflect on pastor appreciation, it should not be a time and period, one time in the year, but it should be every day, every day in the year, that we are expressing our appreciation to our pastors. As we are expressing our appreciation to our pastors, because we understand the work that they engaged in. So today I ask, as I close, that we continue to keep our pastors in prayer, as we continue to keep our pastors ever before the throne of grace, so that they could continue to bless and advance the kingdom of God. Amen. <laughs>